Happy Sunday. I got several requests from people asking me to go over what TENS units are or transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation. So, request granted. Transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation or TENS may just be an 11 on the pain treatment option scale. But what the heck is it? This way for TENS. So transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, or TENS, as I'll call it for the rest of the video, is a therapy that uses low voltage electrical current to provide pain relief. It consists of a battery powered device that delivers electrical impulses through electrodes placed on the surface of your skin. And these electrodes are placed at or near areas where the pain is located or at trigger points. So how does TENS work? There are two theories about how this works. The first is that the electrical current stimulates nerve cells that block the transmission of pain signals, modifying your perception of the pain. The second theory is that nerve stimulation raises the level of endorphins, which are the body's natural pain-killing chemicals, and it leads these endorphins to then block the perception of pain. So what is this therapy used to treat? TENS has been used or is being studied to relieve both chronic or long-lasting and acute, meaning short-term pain. And some of the most common conditions that TENS has been used for include osteoarthritis, which is a disease of the joints, fibromyalgia or aching and pain in the muscles, tendons and joints all over the body, especially along the spine, tendonitis or an inflammation or irritation of a tendon, bursitis, which is inflammation of the fluid filled sacs that cushion joints, labor pain, low back pain, chronic pelvic pain, diabetes related neuropathy, peripheral artery disease, which is a hardening of the arteries that circulate blood to the body. So what are the parts of a TENS device and how do they work? The battery powered TENS device is about the size of a small cell phone. The device comes with several sets of electrode wires and pads where the electrodes connect to the device at one end and then are attached to about a two by two inch size pad at the other. Each pad has an adhesive backing and is positioned on your skin in specific areas along nerve pathways in the areas to be treated. And another cool option is instead of direct contact with the skin, an acupuncturist may connect the TENS unit to acupuncture needles. So this device delivers pulses of electrical energy, which can be adjusted for intensity, frequency, duration, and type, either bursts or continuous is what I mean by type. A doctor, physical therapist, or acupuncturist determines and adjusts the machine settings if it's being used under medical supervision. And we're gonna actually talk about that in a little bit. So what are the advantages or benefits of TENS therapy? So this is a non-invasive method of pain relief. It can be used alone or in addition to prescription or over-the-counter pain relieving medications. And the amount of medication that you're taking may be able to be reduced in some people who use TENS therapy. However, you don't want to stop taking or make any adjustments in your medication or dosing um, without discussing it with, with your doctor or nurse practitioner. Another benefit of the TENS unit is that it's small and portable and therefore it can be used at home or away anytime pain relief is needed. So what are the risks and side effects of TENS therapy? So, a few reported side effects here, definitely. In rare cases, patients have reported burns at the sites where the electrodes are placed and some people may even be allergic to the adhesive that's used to stick the pads to their skin or the materials in the pad itself. The skin may appear red, irritated, develop a rash that may break out. Some people may also be sensitive to or feel um, uncomfortable with the prickling or tingling sensation that's generated by the TENS unit. So does TENS really help relieve pain? 
Results from using TENS for pain relief have been variable and inconclusive. In others, pain relief was not significantly greater in comparison to placebo. So important to talk about is that there are units that are only available by prescription and others that can be purchased over the counter. The difference being when it comes to buying TENS units or electrotherapy devices, you should be cautious because while there are many legitimate sources for safe and efficient over-the-counter electrotherapy, there are also many retailers out there that are not exactly honest and you know, they don't, they're not forthcoming about the safety of their devices and they may be illegally selling you prescription level TENS units and then passing them off as over the counter products. This misleading labeling makes them unsafe. Prescriptions exist as a precautionary middleman for users. And when something has to be prescribed, a physician or another medical professional is stepping in between the user and the treatment to ensure that the patient understands how to handle their treatment safely and efficiently. Medicines or devices are deemed prescription worthy when the product has the potential to harm someone through its misuse. So when looking for a home electrotherapy system, beware of the fine print. You should avoid buying anything that warns caution Federal law restricts this device to sale by or on the order of a physician. This stamp is a sign of a dangerous device, indicating that the product is for prescription use only. Over-the-counter devices are going to come with safety features built into them. For instance, consider prescription devices or machines used in a specialist's office. On these machines, there may be a range of output modes with no limits that only a professional would know how to control. With the over-the-counter TENS units, there are preset modes made to take the guesswork away from you. Each mode often comes with a brief description of what type of pain it should be used for. And then this allows to take the guesswork out of the equation and leave it to the experts to figure out. So this assures that you don't receive either too much stimulation or too little. So in order to obtain the best degree of pain relief with TENS, I recommend the following. Take note of exactly where your pain is located. Outline the most concise and tender area of the pain. Always use two pads or one channel or four pads or two channels at the same time, depending upon the type of TENS unit that you have, as it will not work with just one pad. You can alter the flow of electrical sensation if you change the distance between the electrode pads and or the direction of the pads. Now, the pads can be placed in one of three directions, either vertical, horizontal, or angulated. The pads should never touch and should be at least one inch apart as the distance between the two pads increases, the effectiveness decreases. I don't recommend using them on two completely different parts of your body and also take care not to place your TENS units pads on bones or joints like your knee or your elbow. So placing the pads over a joint, such as the knee or elbow, as I just said, or the, the ankle, um, its movement can alter the adherence of the pad. Okay, so how do we use TENS units for the best results? We're going to start on a low setting and gradually increase until the sensation feels strong but comfortable. If the tingling sensation starts to feel painful or uncomfortable, then you're gonna reduce it slightly. Switching the TENS machine off after you've finished using it and removing the electrodes from your skin is also important. You don't want to leave them on for any extended length of time because the adhesive on the back of it can eventually have you developing irritation. So how long should you keep on a TENS unit? So TENS stimulation should last for only about 30 minutes at a time. And after this, a 20 minute break is advised to give your skin a break. So does the unit break up inflammation? The answer to that is 
Yes, the TENS unit can absolutely help with inflammation as well. Numerous studies have discovered that the electrical impulses can reduce inflammation located deep within the muscle fibers. So with the TENS unit, when you place the pads, it often will come with a little bottle of conductive gel. And this is to help transmit the electrical impulses that are generating the pain relief for you. So in the event that you run out of this conductive gel, is there anything else that you can use? And the answer is yes. If you're desperate and you need something to assist with slippage or movement of the applicator probes, you can technically use something like water or aloe vera gel, serums, saline, ultrasound gel, however, baby oil and Vaseline should not be used because they don't conduct current. When does nerve damage disappear? Now, I decided to put this in this video because there were several questions about when the nerve damage can cross the line and become irreversible. This is virtually impossible to answer with any definitive timeline because small nerve fibers can regenerate. And it really depends on what the underlying cause of the neuropathy actually is in the first place. So if your nerve is bruised or traumatized, but is not cut, it should recover in about six to 12 weeks. A nerve that has been cut will grow at about one millimeter per day. So after about a four week period of rest following nerve injury, some people notice continued improvement and some will notice continued improvement over many months afterwards. For people using TENS units, this is usually the case as well and can be readily used to help with temporary pain and chronic neuropathies where surgical neuromodulation may not be warranted yet or in combination with medications to increase relief. In the event that the neuropathy progresses or a tolerance to the nerve stimulation has developed, then other options will need to be evaluated. Another important thing I want to make sure I clarify is the difference between TENS and EMS, as there seems to be a lot of back and forth with whether they're compatible or whether they can be used interchangeably. Now, I'm sure you're saying, well, I know what TENS units are, but what the heck is EMS? So EMS stands for electrical muscle stimulation. If you were to hold a TENS and an EMS unit side by side, you wouldn't be able to tell them apart. Both use electrodes and they both have similar buttons and layout and functionality and deliver electrical impulses to the user. The difference between TENS and EMS units is what they're used for. TENS units relieve chronic and acute pain, such as arthritis, back pain, labor pain, as we mentioned earlier, sciatica, things like that. EMS units are used as a part of training programs for strengthening muscles, um, rehabilitation, relaxing muscles, and cosmetic muscle toning. So there are TENS and EMS combination devices available for those looking for both pain relief and a tool for muscle strengthening. However, for our purposes in this video, we're only looking at this through the lens of managing neuropathic pain. So TENS units are for someone looking for a natural solution to chronic or acute pain. EMS units are for someone looking to build muscle as a part of a training program. So I want to go over some of the common settings for the TENS units and some of the common phrases and terms that we use when we're talking about TENS units. TENS units as a pain management tool, the, the terminology buttons and various options, treatment modes available on these devices can be pretty overwhelming. So I've broken down the typical TENS unit parameters and language to help you understand what you're looking at when shopping for TENS units or you're new to the therapy. Okay, so the first we're gonna talk about is the mode. So these units come with preset modes that you can select when using TENS therapy. These modes control the pulse, duration, pulse rate, 
timer, and intensity of the pain treatment. Pulse duration is the length of the pulse that the TENS unit administers. A wider pulse duration means a stronger stimulation from the TENS unit. Your TENS waveform selection will be something that you'll want to continue to test out based on how your body reacts to the treatment. The pulse rate is the rate at which pulses are sent from the TENS device. Pulse rates are registered in hertz or pulses per second. The pulse rate chosen depends significantly on the electrode placement. Next is intensity level, and this is the level of shock that's administered by the unit. So the intensity level is measured in MA, with most TENS units ranging from 0 MA to 80 MA, with 80 MA being the strongest. So very important is to start with the lowest level when starting TENS therapy and gradually increase as needed. Next is treatment timing. Most TENS units come with preset auto off and auto on timers. Timing on treatment should be used based on the needs of the therapy. So some pain types require longer treatment times for pain relief. Next is channels. So TENS unit channels are the number of lead wires that connect to the TENS unit. Dual channel means that the TENS unit can connect multiple lead wires to the unit itself. The advantage of dual channel is that you can customize your treatment with various levels of treatment intensity at once. This feature also allows you to add more TENS unit pads during treatment. Electrodes. All right, so also called TENS unit pads, electrodes are the pads that attach to the lead wires that stick directly to your skin. These are often reusable, but should be replaced once the sticky part of them has worn off. It's essential to change electrodes because once their sticky part has worn off, proper treatment will not occur. Electro gels do exist and help keep TENS unit pads sticky. So there are various types of TENS unit pads and they, they differ in size, materials, and how they attach. Some will attach via a pigtail style or snap-on wire, um, kind of very much like an EKG. If anybody's had an EKG out there, then sometimes they will use this type where it's kind of like an alligator clip that snaps onto what looks like a snap on your clothing. Uh, and that's, that's how these TENS units also attach. TENS unit lead wires connect the TENS unit to the TENS unit pads to transfer the electrical impulses for treatment. Longer lead wires allow for more comfort and ease of use since they can reach further. Now there's also wireless TENS units. So wireless versus wired. What, what are, which is there one better? So the wireless units offer an added convenience. So you don't have to worry about the cables getting tugged or them being in your way. For me personally, I would think that the wireless units would be much easier to deal with, right? Even right now, this microphone that's attached to me, I am stepping all over it and almost choking myself with it every time I go to move on a regular basis. So if you're like me, the wireless TENS unit would probably suit you better. It, these are nice because you're not trying to avoid stepping on them. They're not getting hung up on things. You know, it's portable. You can take it anywhere you go and you're not dealing with, you know, tons of wires that you now need to hook up to all of these pads. You know, for ease of use, I would think that the wireless systems would be much nicer. I don't know about insurance coverage with the wireless versus wired. I have no idea, but if experience tells me anything, I don't know how much the wireless will be covered versus the wired, I'm thinking. Next, I'm talking about things you need to be aware of when you're using a TENS unit. So your muscles may twitch when using the TENS unit at high intensity levels. If irritation occurs, you're going to stop treatment and consult your doctor. Pain relief may not occur when initial treatment begins, so it's essential to start at a low intensity level and continue increasing and changing modes as needed. TENS units are not a cure for any physical ailment. They are a tool for pain relief, 
so it's best to continue any physical therapy already in place for treatment. So now let's go over some of the common safety concerns and questions. And one of the most common that I get regarding TENS therapy is, can I use it if I have a pacemaker or other implanted electrical device like a cardiac defibrillator, an internal cardiac defibrillator? And the answer to this is no. Do not use a TENS machine if you have either of these devices. You should check with your doctor or NP to confirm that TENS is a safe option for your pain in general, but also if you have epilepsy, deep vein thrombosis, heart problems or cancer, or skin that is numb or irritated or fragile. So to be clear, I recommend consulting your doctor or nurse practitioner or physical therapist to see if the TENS therapy is right for you because you are sending electrical impulses to your body. Certain conditions warrant not using a TENS unit as I just mentioned just before. So I hope this gave you a really good overview of the TENS therapy. Um, however, this is not the only option for neuropathic pain control as you'll see in the video on neuromodulation. So I'll see you over there.